When you see families visiting our theme park with slightly underthought, ignored, and largely maligned progeny, smile. Then when you go home to your empty apartment, your cheap wine, and your elderly yet aloof house cat, kick back with a bottle or four. This is your Horizon Hub. Good morning, team members. Welcome to another fine day here at Horizon Hubs Parks and Resort. This is Apala, your voice for today's announcements, event changes, and policy updates. This is a very special day, team. As I'm sure all of you are aware, today is the diamond anniversary of the passing of our cherished founder, Gustav Sharif, better known to the rest of the universe as Paw Paw Gus. Everyone is already familiar with the most famous stories about Paw Paw Gus, how he grew up on a moisture farm on the dunes of New Yemen, went to work as a copy boy at Studio Ghibli's Neptune location, and eventually started the company that has delighted audiences and theme park goers alike, willingly or unwillingly. It depends how strong the subliminal mood-enhancing radio wave signal is on any given day. In honor of Paw Paw Gus, Horizon Hub Management has asked team members to submit some of their favorite memories from the days when our treasured founder still operated his three-wheeled mobility scooter on theme park grounds. Also, we've turned up the dial on the subliminal, mood-enhancing wave signal. Let's get started with a very tender memory from Freddie Kimball, an artist in Paw Paw Gus's inner circle who worked on such classic cartoons as Fuzzy Yellow Ducky, Lost in Education Land, and The Lonely Orphan Three-Legged Puppy Gets a Home. We were just finishing another romp with the lonely puppy and started the rap party early. We've been working 20-hour days and keeping ourselves going by getting all hocked up on the billy whiz, so by 10 o'clock the joint was really jumping. There were a few high heels sticking out from under the wrong desk if you get my drift. I was just passing the wacky backy to Arnold Strope when Paw Paw Gus opened the door took one look, and closed it again. He never said a word about it, but the next morning half of the studio had pink slips on their desks. Ha <laughs> ha, good times. It's that time of planetoid revolution again. Time to welcome all of this year's members of the Most Magical Internship Program, team members. This is an amazing opportunity you all have, sitting at the very bottom of Horizon Hub pecking order and performing our most menial tasks for pocket change and college credit. It's going to be a difficult transition, going from school where it feels like you can own the world, to scrubbing strollers and explaining over and over that a hamburger is in fact a cheeseburger without cheese, but you'll see it's a truly rewarding one. It just gets me so misty-eyed. I remember my first days in the MMI. That's right, I myself started in the school program. When I think back, I can still see myself in the janitorial uniform, all orange and covered in biohazard symbols. It felt so tedious at the time, especially in the summer heat with that full face mask on. But really, so many doors opened up for me, and they will for you too. Why, one day, if you work as hard as I did, then you too could become a Team Assistant Communications Specialist. So again, welcome new team members. More than likely, 99% of you will survive the experience, 15% of you will stay on to grow with the company, and the rest will be expelled for underage drinking. Our maintenance team informs me that Outer Zone, Portal to the Sixth Dimension, has ripped an actual hole in the space-time continuum. Again. The popular attraction will be closed for at least another hour while we stop the hissing flow of energy from pulling the known universe into an as-yet-unexplored existence. Thank you for your patience. I received word that several bags of chili have been pronounced missing. They were last seen being wheeled into the Captain Redbeard's cheeseburger galleon. As I'm sure everyone is already aware, 
Chili is transported in plastic bags to our restaurants from a central, secret Horizon Hub location. After all, we wouldn't make chili just anywhere. And certainly not without proper safety procedures. The missing bags of chili were last seen en route to the Galleon's kitchen when Chef Rocky Papadopoulos noticed they were no longer in the hermetically sealed titanium-enhanced compartments used to restrain, <clears throat> uh, I mean contain, contain Horizon Hub chili. If seen, please report the location of the chili to Horizon Hub Dining Management. Everyone remembers Amal Gordib, right? Our former Horizon Hub engineer who recently won the Nobel Prize for his extensive work with historical time travel? Right, that Amal Gordib. Well, this is a real honor because Mr. Gordib took a moment from his busy schedule to send us his favorite Papa Gus memory. Here goes. I'll never forget the first time I showed Papa Gus the designs for time folders. I didn't know at the time that the attraction would one day become the source of everything we know about prehistoric Earth. Traveling back was a real eye-opener. I mean, heck, who would have thought dinosaurs smelled that bad? I, I guess we always assumed they were a little stinky, but wow. Anyway, after I showed him the part where the guests learned previously unknown truths about our past, he asked me if having so many hands get in my way when I work. I replied that, being from Saturn, I've always had eight hands, and it's no big deal. We talked some more about what I had done to guard against potential time paradoxes, and I was just about to show him how I had eliminated all possible negative outcomes when he told me he was trying to listen, but he was too distracted by my single giant eyeball. When I said that my mother was from a disappearing bloodline of proud warriors, and I am, in fact, quite proud of her Cyclopean heritage, he gazed at me with sad, watery eyes and slowly shook his head. He told me to keep trying really hard. You're on the right track, as he muttered under his breath, for someone like you, and left. Ah, Papa Gus, what a kidder. But seriously, he was kind of a racist. A focus on fun finds around Horizon Hub. Encourage guests to take their time strolling down Americana Boulevard, and note that near the half hour of each hour, they may see dapper gents in colorful pinstripe suits. These are the members of none other than our galactically famous Hambone Review players. Day in and day out, they use nothing but their bare hands and a smile to delight audiences along the parade routes. So the next time you hear a guest ask, who's throwing wet meat around? Just reply, why, that's the Hambone Review! Every time I see you perform Hambone Review players, I think there's no way you can beat yourselves. But you do! You just beat yourselves and beat yourselves and beat yourselves over and over again. From the rest of the team to you, thanks for beating yourselves so enthusiastically for our guests, and much happy slapping to come! There's a controversy brewing over the ladies in the Old West Village. And by ladies, I mean the fiberglass showgirls who are adhered to most of the benches in the Old West Village. Saloon girls might be a teensy bit offensive in this day and age, especially the one attached to the bench outside of Cowboy Dandy's Candy Shop, which team members have nicknamed Jiggly McGee. Objecting team members suggest that Jiggly McGee and her fellow statuary might no longer represent Horizon Hub's current idea of family values. Meanwhile, supporters of Jiggly have sent in some pictures of their favorite poses with the statue, who has made for a very popular photo opportunity since her installation on Horizon Hub opening day. I'm looking at some of the pictures right now, and I have to say, some of you are very... Very lonely. And now, a word from our esteemed CEO. Imagine the color black. True, black is not a color, but rather the absence of light. Imagine the vast, deep blackness of our universe, the black of potential where every one of us resides. Imagine that black is beautiful, which it very much is. Focus 
on that beauty, the beauty of potential and depth. Now, focus on numbers in the black. Numbers in the black. Black. That was a word from the CEO. The word, black. Guests interested in shopping at the Hocus Pocus Magic Emporium should be temporarily directed to the west side of Silver Screen Land. In a related announcement, congratulations Hocus Pocus Magic Emporium team members. That was a very impressive trick. Management would be extra super proud of you if you found a way to poof your work location back to Americana Boulevard. That would be awesome. It's time for another Papa Gus fond memory submission. This one comes to us from legendary and retired director Bill Blasio. Hmm. 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 Uh, y you know... Yeah, this story is a is a little much for, you know, employee intercom system. I'll, I'll tell you what. Every time I get to a part I can't read out loud, I'll just play an audio clip of an adorable cuddly kitten. Okay? Well, let's get started. We were on that research trip to New Honduras for the Hold Hands and Sing fireworks show when we ran into three gals with giant... <coughs> it was raining, so we ducked into the local... <coughs> to wait it out. The at the front counter called us over and said, Hey buddy, have you ever tried to um, up your Well, Papa Gus was all over that He took two snorts and then picked up the toughest customer in the joint and that guy straightened them. The moral of the story is never you know on Honduras Cigna or you might lose your you know Brian Wu, please report to the Little Dipper's costume department. Little Dipper's pants are white and not as opaque as you seem to think they are. There's no need to go home. We have an extra pair of white briefs you can borrow. One additional note, there is a hole in your red briefs. You should probably get some new ones. I have a report that the missing bags of chili have been spotted outside of Mother Goose's storybook forest. The sighting was reported by veteran team member Ellie Mouton, who has operated the classic children's attraction for the past 40 years. Ellie is basing her report entirely on her sense of smell, as she's had trouble with her eyesight since, quote, the cataracts. And Ellie admits she may be mistaken, as the storm drains in storybook forest can get clogged up, and build up an odor that is not unlike the odor emitted by a fresh batch of Horizon Hub chili. While she has our attention, Ellie would like to remind maintenance that Storybook Forest is still, and I'm quoting again, infested with leprechauns. Time to talk turkey. And by that, I mean those rumors that have been going around again that our turkey legs are not 100% turkey legs and are in fact Plushin Emu. This is complete nonsense. Do not encourage guests to spread this around. Our main supplier is, in actuality, Goody Gobbler Farms from the American Midwest on Earth. They raise nothing but turkeys, and the males we take our turkey legs from can reach nearly 23 kilograms when fully grown. For some prospective team members, the Plushin Emu as adults can reach nearly 3 meters in height, and their legs are covered in 5 centimeter spines. How could our crispy skinned, perfectly smoked, and savagely delicious turkey legs possibly come from one of those. Um, let's go to a word from our sponsors while I am totally not going out to get a turkey leg. And now, a message from one of our partners. Carnival Cruisers knows how badly you want to party on the moon. 
Round trip flights at special team discounted rates are taking off April through September, so now is the time to scratch that itch. You know the one. Not that one. Gross. I have another favorite memory submission here that I think is particularly important for reasons I'll explain in a moment. This one comes from Yolanda Brown, who currently works at the register at the Ricky Tiki Terrace Bar and Grill. My favorite memory of Paw Paw Gus is the encounter I had with him last Tuesday. I was wrapping up the late shift at the Ricky Tiki Terrace when I had to use the restroom. It gets really boring out there. You know how no one really eats at the terrace after the 10 o'clock parade? We're kind of hidden behind the banana trees. I mean, I don't even know why we stay open. Anyway, I had just flushed the toilet and was washing my hands when I heard someone come up behind me and say, Peekaboo, I see you. I turned around and it was Paw Paw Gus. I am totally not kidding. He like waved at me and then he dissolved into thin air. Now, I'm not the only one who's noticed Paw Paw Gus is haunting the Ricky Dicky Terrace Bar and Grill's women's restroom. And I don't blame him if I was a ghost. I would totally spend the afterlife haunting the men's locker room at the Daring Deuce Stunt Spectacular. Now, I would say that Yolanda may have confused our request for our heartwarming Paw Paw Gus stories with our late Urban Legends segment on Thursdays, but there are at least 20 more stories in my submission stack that are very similar to this one. I have no choice but to concede that Paw Paw Gus is indeed haunting the women's restrooms outside of the Ricky Tiki Terrace Bar and Grill. While I'm not sure why one of the universe's most beloved public figures would choose to haunt the Ricky Tiki restrooms specifically, we should probably do something extra special for those facilities. You know, it, it, at least stock them with some hand lotion or something. Horizon Hub is an Ever Tomorrow production, written by Georgia Ball and Jesse Lynn Jones, narrated by Jesse Lynn Jones, and produced by Georgia Ball. Music by freemusicarchive.org. Got comments or questions? Email us at georgia at evertomorrow.com or follow us on Twitter at evertomorrow. Go to evertomorrow.com for more episodes and lots of other videos we think you'll like. <laughs>